You got two drinks. I do, I do. This one is the, the green juice. You know, it's vegetable juice. Okay. Good. It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> and this is this is my it's coffee. Kevin. Yeah, it's Kevin. It's it's as well. It's as Rachel and Leah, isn't it? It's like you know, Rachel, I I love, but Leah, I have to have. So <laughs> I don't even know what to do with Rachel. And Leah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Morning, welcome to Wake Up. Listen, two ladies in your life is never a good idea. No, but two drinks even... is okay. You can have coffee and vegetables. You can have juice. both. Yeah, you can. But I don't understand the two, because I have one, and I love her with all my heart, but I couldn't imagine two. No. Because wouldn't they gang up on you? I don't know what would happen, but I can tell you it's not good. <laughs> I don't think it's good. Ask, good ask Solomon how it worked out for him. Good morning. He's like, it'd be better to be in an attic. <laughs> Speaking you of You know, Sol he wrote that. <laughs> Is that what he said? He said, it'd be better to be in an attic than an angry wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to be in Proverbs. We're going to be listening to Solomon and some of his wisdom right. today. Yeah. Right. We're going to be Proverbs chapter 2. And those, we want to say welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor I'm, Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We got a great show. We got a scripture for you, and uh, we got a prayer over your day. And for our radio listeners, we want to tell you that um, we're going to be moving off the radio. Yeah, I don't want them to be. Uh, this is a great station. Keep listening, but one day, all of a sudden, we're not going to be here. Don't think the rapture came. Don't get <laughs> all they worried. Go? Where's my daily Bible study? Go to YouTube and sign up for it. We're actually looking at going on a daily t uh, television program. Right. Looking at, at that sort of thing. So in the meantime, if you're missing us, just go to YouTube, sign up for it. You can get us every single day. Your sir, the teaching was incredible. We're going to be in Proverbs today, chapter 2, uh, verse 6. Yes. yes, and we've been talking about the, the Word of God is living and active, right. sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces the division between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. The Bible says it judges or discerns, I love the word discerns, the thoughts and attitudes or intentions of our heart. We know, biblically speaking, it says, as a man thinks, so what's in me? I say your BS. Your BS is controlling your life, your belief system. Yeah. And it makes 98 to 99% of your decisions. You don't even realize why that attitude came out at work. You don't even realize why you were you snapped at that person and you went off in traffic. It just It's just guiding your life. And so the Word of God was designed to get in there. And those things that got in by the time you you're 12 years old, those wrong beliefs, maybe some things that you picked up from your dad that weren't the best habits, some mm -hmm. things that you picked up from your and you picked up all these beliefs about what you can't do and what you can't have got in there. And now the Word of God was designed to get in there and clean it up. Yeah. And, and, we, and we let we let our past and our, our past beliefs and our belief system shape our lives and they and they in turn shape our future. Right. And uh, it's like, I, I like to call it like an autopilot. It is your autopilot. So it is. Even though our radio listeners, you're in the car right now and you're driving, but if you're not thinking about where you're supposed to be going, and maybe you're going somewhere new. Have you it's ever done a Tesla. That? Have you ever done that where you suddenly are back? Like you, you suddenly too. went home? <laughs> right. Right? Because you were thinking somewhere, you were driving past your house, and you turned in, and then you went, where, where am I going? And that autopilot is steering you. Uh, in, in you ever move and do that? Your belief systems are doing that. Like you move and like... You oh, just, I do it I all the time. Drive, and I'm like, my garage door won't open. And you go, actually went all the way there and, and tried I go, to open the garage I go, door. Oh, wait, that's not my garage anymore. <laughs> I never went all the way there. I, I have made the wrong turn before where I used to live Because I get where I live now. What I normally do is when I'm driving, I'm, I'm going over a sermon or a teaching. So I get, yeah. and and I don't know if you guys do this, but I I like almost wake up and I go, okay, how did I get here? Like, yeah. I, do, I don't know how I got there. Yeah. It was the angels and my belief system. So if I haven't really thought about it, when I first move, I drive to the other house. That's right. It's just, like an autopilot. And our, our life is actually doing that right now. The reason we keep circling the same right. mountain in our lives or seeing the same problems in our life is because our autopilot keeps making decisions right. for us. And so what the Word of God does is it offers us new information right. and new instructions. Remember what the TomTom -tom used to, you have to hook it up to your computer and you'd have to update it once in a but, while because yeah. it would get all new roads. Because I remember like the first, when I got the TomTom, -tom, I didn't do that, and we were in California, and I was trying to get to Legoland, but it, we kept driving, and then there was no road. It was just ocean. <laughs> and it's all, go straight. I'm like, that might be impossible. <laughs> It's your aquatic. There may, there, does your car have an aquatic feature? There because, may, used to be a road here, but there is no road now. <laughs> so, so the Word of God is giving us this information and instructions it. that we need. And so it says in Proverbs chapter two, verse six: "For the Lord gives wisdom." Where do you get it? CNN. From the Lord. It's a gift. Get, the Book of James Google says, "Anyone it. who wants wisdom, just ask God, you because God gives it to you for free." For the Lord gives wisdom. 
and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I love that. The reason I think we don't make bad decisions intentionally, we make bad decisions because we have wrong information. Right. We didn't know. We or, didn't know how to treat. Or we didn't, didn't believe. You didn't know how to treat your, your wife, right? But then you went to a marriage seminar and you went, well, that's why she acts that way. Okay, I, I'm not treating her like she's the most important thing in my life. And I'm not spending time communicating with her. And I don't spend the first part of my night when I get home making her feel valuable. I didn't know that. My, you're, you're like, my dad didn't show me that. Yeah. No one show, I came from a broken marriage yeah. and I didn't have that information. But then you go and you get the word of God in and all of a sudden I can make better decisions in my relationship. That's right. Not because something crazy happened, just I got new information. And the new information and new instructions, remember we, we said a couple of days ago that if you don't mix the message with faith, right. it has no value to you. In other words, if, if you hear some instruction from God and you go, well, I don't believe that. <laughs> right. That's how simple it is. Yeah, you just yeah. have to go, well, I don't believe that. Well, God says, you know, you should, you should not sleep together before you get married. Right. Now, you can, you'll still go to heaven and stuff, but man, you make the you make your road harder than it needed to be. Right. There are some things that God's trying to do and work out, and you don't want to marry Mr. Wrong. You don't want to marry Mrs. Wrong. You don't want to uh, have these these different uh, mm -hmm. problems that come with this. So he's, in, he's created some instructions that will help you live a better life and but sometimes we go well. That's for like two thousand years ago. Does that actually matter? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like it's twenty twenty. Or sometimes people apply their age. Well, that's for eighteen and nineteen year olds. I'm thirty five. Like yeah, what? that doesn't apply to me. And and not realizing that those instructions are there to help life be less painful. Right. And the key in here, I think, is knowledge and understanding. Understanding is when I understand why I do something it gives me usually more of the parameters not to do it. People know what's right and wrong, mm -hmm. right? But until you really understand it and what the benefits are is the problem. And the more I hear something, the more I begin to understand it. So when I was, me and Holly had gone over to France and, and, and people were saying stuff to me and I'm like, I don't have no idea what they're saying. Right. Be I know they're speaking French. <laughs> and I know he's telling me something's wrong with what I'm doing. Yeah. But I don't understand it. Yeah. The more I hear it, I begin to understand it, which means then I can take action. And so that's the same thing. If I said, don't touch this table, most a lot of you out there would go, I don't think he has not touched this table. I'll touch whatever table I want. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a grown man. I'll touch the table. But if I, got I, get, hand, I got both hands on the table But if I now. said, we just stained this table. It's wet. It's going to get uh, stuff all over your hands. Yeah. Now that I brought some understanding to why not to touch the table, you go, oh, okay. That yeah, I might just kind of. Well, yeah, there's still there still are people you would touch. There's still people that would touch. I'm gonna write something on it before it dries, so I can get my name <laughs> inscribed on that thing forever. So when we begin to understand why we say the right thing yeah. and we speak, uh, and that's what you're so great at in your message is is okay. Make sure that the right things come out of your mouth. Yeah. Okay, well, people are like, well, what does that matter? And then you bring some understanding. Well, this is what happens yeah. when you say the wrong things. This is where it's taking you. Yeah. You want to speak only the positive. It's true. It's true. I, uh, we, need, we need to pray. And, and, uh, but I, I, it's a quick story. You know, my, one of my kids uh, said, my phone broke, my car breaks, everything's breaking oh, in the yeah. last couple of weeks. And I, I, said, I said, oh, are, are, you, are you tithing? Because that's, you know, uh, my stuff never breaks. Everything always works for me. I, I, <laughs> but I remember when I used to have all my stuff being broken and stolen and everything falling apart. And my mom had the same conversation with me. She said, are you tithing? And I, so I said to him, are you tithing? And he's like, is that really a thing? And I was like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really a thing. <laughs> and when I began to explain that this is how the instruction of the Lord works, God has certain patterns and this is how his, this is his deal. And so I began to explain how God rebukes the devourer on our behalf when, when we give back to him what's already his. And when I explained that it's actually still his, and he began to see that he was keeping God's and not returning to God what was God's, immediately. It was, just, it was a three-minute conversation. Right. You uh, brought some understanding to him. It was some understanding. And I think that that's important for us is to know that God is, is trying to give us. When, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And Which this means we've got to open up our ears to hear what he's saying in his word. And this is why it's so important to be in church because the pastor brings the word. Mm -hmm. And his job is to bring understanding to you why mm -hmm. I apply the word to my life. Let's pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for everybody that is watching or listening today. We ask that you 
Go before them in their day, Lord, that you're making some great ways. You're doing some incredible things in their life. You're helping them to get the word inside of them, Lord. They have a hunger and a desire to be in your house, to continue to get that understanding, that wisdom in their life that will guide them. They'll get the update that they need it. The old way keeps taking them to the dead ends of life, but they need that update that begins to take them to the life that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this clip. You know, I've been in the ministry in December will begin the begin will be the beginning of my 44th year of full-time ministry. And and it's it's been a it's been a wonderful run. I um, I'm writing a book with Kelly right now uh, entitled Staying Power. Cuz you know, I've been married, I've been with the same woman for 40 years, been married 38, and don't clap, one person clap because you know it. I had to be there every second of it. Amen. So, but and, and been in the ministry for a really long time and I've watched them come and go. And I'm 61 years old now. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's something on always on the other side of your persistence and, and you sticking in there. And um, but, you know, at 61 years old, things start happening to your body. Amen. Somebody. Amen. You sleep eight hours and you wake up tired. Come on, somebody. It just happens, right? You sneeze and separate a rib. <laughs> just what happens. You put your boot on and you can't straighten up till lunch. You know, it's just, it, it, you just, you pray that renew your youth like an eagle and it just ain't working. Amen. So funny. It's just like you're laying eggs, but you're not raised. Oh, anyway, so, so I'm, I'm trusting that God is uh, going to renew something here this morning in our lives. But this has been a great season for me. I'm traveling about 11,000 miles a month. I'm preaching all over America. Uh, God is using my voice in this nation like never before. Uh, I'm pinching myself. Uh, about this time, I thought I'd be about a, I'd be a dinosaur and have to retire. But instead of retire, I'm going to refire. And, uh, the de- and, the, and the invitations and the demands, and I'm speaking to over 100,000 people a year, and it's just amazing what God can do. So there's something on the inside of me that I want to put on the inside of you that can multiply your life the closer you get to the... Uh, the older you get, the better you get. Amen, somebody, no matter where you start. So let me let me jump into this. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, 20, verse 22 says that the fruit of the spirit, everybody say the spirit. So how many of you know that wherever your root is, whatever spirit your root is, you can it, it's evidenced by what your fruit is. So the fruit of the spirit, which you could basically say the root of that produces the fruit, extracts the characteristics of the spirit that your root is in. Like if your roots are in your past, then you replicate your regrets. If your roots are in the betrayal, then you then the fruit is I can't trust again. If your root is in uh, the broken system, how can we look to a broken system to fix what's broken? The broken system breaks things. The redeemed system redeems things. Amen, somebody? So if you attach your belief and put your roots in what Adam did, then you're going to have Adam's results. But if you put your root in what Jesus did, you're going to have resurrection power results. Are you tracking with me? So the Bible says that the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, it goes on. It says then against those things, there is no law. That phrase in the Greek, there is no law, carries with it the idea that there is no agency in the universe that can regulate the volume of the fruit that comes from being rooted in God's spirit. So there is no ceiling. The issue is not God's supply in your life. The issue is you putting a demand in on God in your life. See, so what we what we need to understand is we got to take the religion out of our Christianity. We got we got to take the limits off. We got to quit calibrating to the ceilings of the way we were raised and we need to obliterate the limitations because we've been raised up. I know we've been raised, but we've been raised up out of the way we've been raised. Amen, somebody? I mean, I I wasn't raised, right? You can tell. 
But I'm not going to let the limitations of me growing up with food stamps and government cheese and government peanut butter tell me how to live my life now. I've been raised up out of the way I was raised. Amen. I'm seated in heavenly places with my father, God, in Christ Jesus. Amen. The world is my footstool. All of the promises of God are mine. Why am I trying to calibrate my life to somebody who delivered ice cream to liquor stores for a living? Who constantly told me, you got a strong back and a weak mind. No one's ever going to follow you. Excuse me. Hold on. The Lord... The Lord will raise you up out of the way you were raised. Our dreams have got to exceed our excuses. Well, we hope you enjoyed today. Give us a thumbs up, share it, like, and subscribe. And give us some cool comments. We love your comments. And uh, we are, we're still in the middle of the prayer conference. You can yeah. still come out tonight if you're locally. Uh, you're going to see some great things, some great miracles. Wherever your church is, make sure you're in church this weekend. God bless you. Have a great one.